So today's video is a little bit different, right? It's also full of spoilers about the new orc quest, so please don't watch beyond this point if you haven't played the quest or don't want it to be spoiled. Now, if you're okay with that, then cool, let's continue because I got some things I want to talk about, some likes and dislikes about the new war experience. But what did you think of it? What did you like or not like? Let me know in the comment section below and as always, have a great day. Now, the new war quest itself and the story behind it for me at least was really, really good in a lot of places. I thoroughly enjoyed my playthrough, I really did. But I felt like I have more questions at the end of it than answers. And I know that's the same for a lot of you as well. It did open up a new door, a new direction for the game for the first time in years. And I really can't wait to see what that direction is going to be post New War from next year onwards. We know Daviri is going to be involved at some point, but what else? First of all, why did I choose Margulis? That's a question I've been getting a lot of in my comment section. People are legit mad at my choice. And I wish there was some kind of deep thinking involved on my part but there generally isn't most of the time there isn't in anything I do and it wasn't because of the booba right it was nothing to do with the booba whatsoever I chose Margulis because I wanted a change on my screens for eight years it has been Lotus or Nata popping up on my screen and I just wanted something different which I guess to some of you lower guys out there feels a little bit silly from my perspective but it is what it is I chose Margulis for that reason if that disappoints you, then chill, relax. It has no bearing on your game, just mine. And I'm interested in seeing if that choice will have proper implications down the line, if my choice will actually matter, or if it is just a skin with a different name. Yes, the new war story has plot holes. It has foreshadowing. It has stay tuned for next quest moments. And it has moments where something fatal happens and they just sweep it under the rug and keep going as if nothing ever happened. <coughs> Teshin. And I know, right? Eternalism. He's dead, but he's still alive somewhere. But there was one moment within the quest that really didn't sit well with me, which I will go over in a few minutes, that I guess Eternalism can also play a part in, if you want to go down that road. But the quest itself, the music, the sound effects, the Warframe sound department absolutely nailed it yet again, as they seemingly keep doing with every feckin' edition. The Fortuna lift segment was really something, especially when you go back and listen to the lyrics of the Narmor song, that feeling of them finally just giving up. And the same goes for the visuals throughout the quest as well. The lighting in some of the new zones, the tile sets was amazing. The skybox for moments like the Viso segment on the corpus ship where you can stand at the window and watch the huge war raging outside or the Pergasa segment where the railjack was having to move between the carcasses of the murex and the solar flares were going off while trying to avoid the heat that was blasting off the remnants of those ships was really really good as well it was actually incredible if I'm being honest but out of the new playable characters right Teshin was probably my least favorite to play which seems weird right it is Teshin but it just felt a little bit drawn out, that segment, compared to the others. There was too many things to open and follow, and towards the end of it, I just started to skip enemies just to hit those kind of portal moments. Like, again, I know, Eternalism, the fact that he's a Dax as well, he can be brought back, it just felt a little bit hollow. Feck, a better trade-off instead of killing Teshin would have been to accidentally kill Konzu instead. I'd be okay with that. Kick his old ass off the blimp, pretend it was an accident, I don't care. Oh no, he fell, he went for lunch, oh no, splash, gone, bloop. And I've said this on stream, so I know I'm echoing myself, I apologise, I am repeating myself, but we could have accidentally snapped Konzu's neck when we removed that mask. I mean, he's old, he's brittle, and then we could have just nudged his body under the table. Oh no, konzu has gone for lunch, I haven't seen him, and then just casually, casually whistle as you walk away. The thing is, I've heard about his lunch too many times over the last few years. I farmed the crap out of the plains of Eidolon for the amps, for the fishing, for the mining, to the point where... Konzu just annoys me. <laughs> and I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry. But the Unum Tower could have easily squished him. But no, I was robbed of that moment and I was given a hollow Teshin death instead. But anyway, we move on. Carl, Viso and the Drifter segment felt so much better for me. And it might just be the simple fact that Teshin plays too similar to a Warframe. And that's why I didn't enjoy it as much. Whereas the other three characters were something completely new and played at a completely different pace than what we are used to. Cal's segment was just sheer fun for me. You know, going, going full Daka. Simple as that. Visos was slower paced, but the drones and the MOA mechanics were a breath of fresh air in terms of playstyle and pace. And Viso, to be honest, going pure hero mode at the end, I absolutely love that. Now, the Drifter segments with the smoke bombs, the stealth mechanics, and of course the radar are showing off where enemies were was absolutely great until 
the quest ended and you actually got your drift on and they can't do any of that anymore. Or until, I guess, maybe they expand forward or on that with the Daviri side of things, maybe your Drifter will get those abilities back and be able to use the bow as well. I've already mentioned that not being able to use that bow on the Drifter after the quest is a huge disappointment, but I'm hoping after Christmas, like I said, and into next year, like I said, with maybe Daviri, that the Drifter will eventually be able to wield weapons. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe give drift off specific missions i legit thought we were going to get to play a stalker at one point in the quest and i know i'm not the only one either when he showed up on the elevator and kind of smoked in beside you i got really excited i thought yes finally but we didn't right we didn't he did however look really pissed off when hun Hao said that they were going to help us right he did kind of give a whole wait what well, i didn't agree to this also he gave us a new super powerful bow considering he just used the dread it felt like the stalker could have been given that bow years ago and he would have scared us again so Hun Hao's definitely been holding out on Stalker you're kind of wondering what other weapons has Hun Hao got back there in his arsenal that he could give Stalker and just has chosen not to now Hun Hao and Stalker I'm sure will play another role throughout the next story or I hope to do at least I want Stalker to be this terrifying thing again which he hasn't been for bloody years and I know a lot of the community want that as well the three Archons right the three fights I'm saying Archons not Archons right because I know it's pissing people off. The first two fights felt great. Felt like proper boss battles. The third fight, not so much. It died in two or three hits, depending on the weapon you brought to the quest, and your Warframe as well. Maybe making us fight all three of them as Drifter would have been better, more enjoyable. Getting the crystals that way could have been more fun, but it is what it is. Now, the bit in the quest that annoyed me the most, and a lot of other people in the community as well, seems to have been... Era's redemption arc. It just came out of nowhere, with no real signs of him changing his mind previously in dialogue with Hun Hao and so on. And I'm curious as to why they chose that direction. He was built up as the big bad, right? The bad guy. The done horrible things to Ostron's Grenier Corpus throughout the quest line. Us and Lotus as well. But we just let Era off with it. We didn't get to fight him. We didn't get to do anything in that direction whatsoever. We kind of thanked him for saving us. That was it. He killed Teshin, not Konzu, right? I thank him for that. But he had five-minute segment in the Necromech where he helped us through the Murex, and I know we didn't see his body under the rubble, so maybe he's not dead. Maybe he is still alive, and he has returned to Hun Hao's side. But I was hoping, I was really hoping we would get to fight Era. But again, we didn't, so there's not a whole lot we can do about it. And if he is dead, then Eternalism is there, so what's dead is also alive somewhere, so Era could still show up again in the future. Now, the man in the wall being an actual man in a wall with a wally on top of it while missing a finger was absolute quality. I don't know if Lotus seen him or seen something else while she was closing that portal, and I don't know if he came through or was trying to come through and she pushed him back, or if he just popped in to say hi, to kind of troll us. I'm not sure. I'm sure maybe some of it will be explained further with the Viri, but honestly, I'm going to need someone like Stallard, who is the lore nut, or used to be the lore nut on Warframe, to come back, make a video explaining all of this for me, because no one does lore like Stallard did. And the lore aspect of the man in the wall, Tau and the Void, has me so confused right now. The same goes for the fate of everyone else on the Zaraman. But I'm sure a lot of that will be explained with Daviri. I guess I've got a lot of reading to do. I guess there's bound to be areas where I can look up lore and it will be fully explained for me. Now, the other aspect of the quest or the ending to the quest that makes no real sense to me is Narmor was supposed to be this huge leader who had converted the whole solar system into a cult. But there's no real sign of him ever being a thing on the star chart now after the quest with the exception of the corpses of the murex ships all over the star chart but when you go down into missions and you go down onto any of the open worlds it's like he wasn't really a thing with the exception of or Valis, which has that kind of face statue but there is no other temples no other statues and it just feels a little bit hollow there as well it feels like there should be signs of narmor everywhere right fortuna looks a little bit different on the inside as well I think DE have said that they just didn't get around to adding it before the quest was released and hopefully a lot of that stuff gets added early into next year or new players who go through the quest will also be feeling the way we are right now with that section of it. But for the most part, I really enjoyed the quest. I thought it gave us the opportunity to definitely have new playable characters in the game and I'd be excited to go down that aspect of the game more. And like I said, it opened up a lot of doors 
towards the possible next direction that they're going to take with Warframe from now onwards because that old Lotus Nata arc has now been hopefully put to bed and something else is going to come from it from the Viri onwards. Now before I go my Finn plushie has got three days left up on the website after that it will be gone forever. The idea of Finn was following my heart surgery it is about the end of something old and the start of something new going down a new path a new path in your life um, it is the idea of a small warrior with a big heart. Like I said, the link is in the description and some of the proceeds from this plushie will go towards supporting my channel. Like I said, let me know in the comment section below. Have a great day and as always, thanks for watching.